Hello everyone, today in this module I am going to talk about the theory of island biogeography. One of the major topics in ecological biogeography is variation in the diversity of species among regions or habitats. Early observations of biogeography involved the examination of the geography of biodiversity around the globe. This was followed by recognition of the species area relationship. As area increases, the number of species present in the diversity also increases. The learning objectives of this module are introduction to the theory of biogeography, islands and species area relationships, equilibrium theory of island biogeography, evidence for the equilibrium theory of island biogeography, island biogeography theory and conservation. A great deal of conservation research has been done on islands because they are small replicated units of area isolated from other habitat. They are very useful for species, community and ecosystem studies. Islands are used for studying e evolutionary and ecological problems. Alexander Wall Humboldt in 1807 stated that larger areas harbor more species than smaller ones. Island and species area relationships. What determines the number of species on an island? Islands typically have fewer species than patches of the same size on continents. Large islands tend to support more species than smaller islands. Pritzen in 1962 formalized that if the area of the island is plotted against the number of species on a logarithm scale, the relationship would be a straight line as S is equal to C A Z where s is the number of species, c is constant meaning the number of species per unit area, a is the area of island and z is a constant which varies between different taxa. The relationship between the number of species and area is called species area curve. Scientists have proposed that the species composition of an island is a dynamic equilibrium with the number of species resulting from a balance between colonization and extinction. That is, the number of species on an island reflects a balance between the rate at which new species colonize it and the rate at which populations of established species become extinct. The number of species on an island is increased by new colonizations but decreased by extinctions. As long as the rate of new colonization exceeds the rate of extinction, the number of species goes up, but when the rates become equal, the number no longer changes as it is at equilibrium. When an island is nearly empty, the rate at which new species will establish populations will be high and the extinction rates will be low because few species are available to become extinct. As the resources are limited, the rate at which the resident populations go extinct will be high when the island is fully relatively full. Thus, there must be a point where two rates are equal, where input from immigration balances output from extinction. That equilibrium number of species would be expected to remain constant as long as the factors determining the two rates did not change. Equilibrium theory of island biogeography. The equilibrium theory of island biogeography describes the theoretical relationship between immigration and extinction of species to islands depending on their size and distance from the mainland. The theory builds on the first principles of population ecology and genetics to explain how distance and area combine to regulate the balance between immigration and extinction in island populations. Two major variables thought to affect extinction rate and immigration rate are the first is size of the island and second is the distance from the mainland. Island size As the size of the island increases, immigration rates decreases slightly because the island is a bigger target for dispersing individuals. Extinction rate is lesser on the large island because larger islands support large populations or species which in turn provide buffer to extinction events. Distance effect, as the distance from the mainland increases, the immigration rate decreases as the far away islands are more difficult to reach 
and fewer species are able to cross that barrier. Immigration is higher on the near islands than on distant islands. Hence, the equilibrium number of species present will be greater on near islands. Therefore, the number of species on near large island is higher than the number of species on distant small islands. The theory predicts everything else being equal, distant islands will have lower immigration rates than those close to a main island and equilibrium will occur with fewer species on distant islands. Close islands will have high immigration rates and support more species as seen in the figure. By similar reasoning, large islands with their lower extinction rates will have more species than small ones, again everything else being equal that is the frequently is not for larger islands often have a great variety of habitats and more species for that reason. Evidence for equilibrium theory of island biogeography. How well does it explain what we actually observe in nature? One famous test of the theory was provided in 1883 by a catastrophic volcanic explosion that devastated the island of Kretakoa located between the islands of Sumatra and Java. The flora and fauna of these remnant and the two adjacent islands were completely exterminated yet within 25 years. 13 species of birds and recolonized what was left of the island. Between the explosion and 1934, 34 species actually became established, but 5 of them went extinct. In 1984 and 85, 35 species were present. During 1934 to 1985, a further 14 species had become established and 8 had become extinct. As the theory predicted, the rate of increase declined as more and more species colonized the island. In addition, an equilibrium was approached, there was some turnovers. The authors also tested the theory against experimental data. Wilson and Simberloff in 1969 artificially created miniature Kratatoas by fumigating small mangrove islets to exterminate all the arthropods. Wilson and his colleagues then routinely surveyed the arthropod species that recolonized these islets. They found that the number of species on these miniature Kratatoas returned to pre-extermination levels within two years, where they remained stable thereafter which demonstrated that species equilibria do exist. The predicted distance effect was also confirmed. The farther an islet was from the mainland, the fewer species it held. Island Biogeography Theory and Conservation Island Biogeographic Theory has been applied to many kinds of problems including forecasting fauna changes caused by fragmenting previously continuous habitat. Island biogeographic theory can be a great help in understanding the effects of habitat fragmentation. It has become an essential component of conservation biology, particularly in the analysis of preserve designs. The fragmentation of natural habitats results in smaller patches surrounded by uninhabitable or hostile human environment. The remnant patches of the habitat, national parks and nature reserves can be considered islands. The relationship between reserve area and probability of a species survival is, is characteristically different from different species. Explicit suggestions thus can be made for the optimal geometric design of reserves. To summarize this module, the island biogeography theory has not kept pace with growing understandings of the complexity of nature. One of the major challenges for the theory of island biogeography has been in understanding the origin of the diversity patterns on oceanic islands. This has led to the introduction of new theories. Island biogeographers are moving towards a new synthesis, identifying and incorporating aspects of the island systems that were not considered in the past. Thank you.